And here we have the biggest winners of Chapter Approved 2022. It seems that the Necrons have won big in the points drop game, and these Deathless Metal Xenos are going to be far more of a threat on the tabletop. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where we've been going through the Chapter Approved 2022 points drops, seeing what's gone up, what's gone down, and what it might mean for the factions going forward. So far we've taken a look at Death Guard and Space Marines. For the Death Guard I think it was largely a nerf. The Space Marines had some good and some bad. Some very effective units being nerfed, but quite a lot of good stuff for some specific chapters. But it really does look like Games Workshop wanted to give Necrons a really big boost. A whole load of units in the army that were already semi-decent have got decent cuts, and this combined with the recent Necron core changes just makes things look so much better than they were six months ago. I think Necrons certainly were in line for a bit of a boost, kind of suffering from early Codex Syndrome, one of the first codexes of 9th, and then of course every single codex after that, Games Workshop seems to like releasing stronger, meaning the original codexes just aren't quite as threatening as when they dropped. I certainly feel like these points changes will be good enough to have people take a second look at a lot of different units, and I feel are pretty certain to make Necron list stronger as a whole going forward. In the video, we'll take a look at what went down, how much it dropped by, and whether or not I think that this gets the unit to being a particularly strong choice for the Necron army. First up, it seems that Zarek himself, the Silent King, has received a decent points cut. Previously he was 450 points, now he's 420. That means you get 30 points back from him, or he drops by 7%. I already felt that Mr. Zarek was a fairly decent choice for competitive Necron armies. He is a bit vulnerable to being shot down by very heavy anti-tank fire, but at the same time is an enormous threatening model with the ability to make enemies fight last, and the recent changes to the core keyword meant that his very powerful buffs went that bit further. I feel like by taking Zarek you are committing to one certain style of Necron list, but at 420 points he's looking better than ever if you choose to. Really though, I think it's the squads and units that have me the most excited about this update. Perhaps one of my favourite changes about the whole lot are the flayed ones going down to just 10 points. They were previously 13 before, the same as Warriors, and even in their current rules I kind of quite liked them. A unit that's just as durable as Warriors can also be Obsec, and now they're a core unit that can access all sorts of buffs. I remember doing a recent Necron combo video, and a unit of 20 of them can be putting out something like 100 attacks at strength 5, AP minus 2, hitting on 2s, with just one support character and a couple of command points expended. I think these things genuinely have the damage output to get there. They're already fairly durable, and now they're 3 points less than Warriors, I think they're just a spectacular unit. You can either make them just a massive damage brick, or you could just as easily use them as an actions and utility type unit. They get deep strike for free, and they can be a unit that has obsec as well in certain dynasties, for 50 or 60 points for a really tiny unit, I think that's really, really good. Moving on though, just as impressive I think are the Scorpet Destroyers. Again, already a unit that I'd kind of rate very, very highly for Necrons. A whole bunch of high AP, high damage attacks on a fairly fast platform, and they can be kind of exceptionally durable as well, having that stratagem for just one command point to make them minus one to wound. They're going down to 30 points from 35, so a pretty whopping 14% point reduction to the extent where I feel that a unit with that cost is almost mandatory for the Necrons now, even if it's just the one unit to just run up the board and have that minus one to wound stratagem to shield them from harm somewhat. Their damage output is great, and they can take similar buffs to the flayed ones. I think it'd be really hard to go too far wrong with something like a unit of five in most Necron lists. Their faster and sneakier partners in crime, the Ophidian Destroyers, have also gone down similarly. Again, they're dropping from 35 to 30 points, so again, much stronger in absolute terms, Though I still think if you are looking for destroyers with that attack profile, you're probably better off going for the Scorpet destroyers over the Ophidians. They do have a few advantages, including extra speed and deep strike, but I feel like for Necron melee, I'd either go with the Scorpet destroyers or the flayed ones at the moment. I feel like they'd cover most niches better than the Ophidian destroyers. It really is a good day to be a Necron destroyer though, as both flavors of Locust destroyer also went down by 5 points. The regular Locust destroyers are now 45, and the Locust heavies are 55. For the standard Locust, I think it's okay, but I don't think they were all that amazing before, in my opinion. With the buff, of course, they're a lot more usable and do compete better. The guns are quite nice generalist ones, and they can make quite good use of that destroyer stratagem. However, of the two, I'm far more interested in the Locust heavy destroyers myself. I think 55 points is now a really good price tag for that enormous 3d3 damage shot. They were certainly already seeing some play in Necron lists as some fast-moving anti-tank, and now they're a core unit, you can do things like resurrect them with Technomancers and give them other buffs like my will be done. Again, I feel like it's very easy just to include a few of them in the list to be an annoying long-range nuisance that can really punch very hard indeed. Overall though, I think it's just excellent news for all of these units. I think Flayed Ones, Scorpet Destroyers and Locust Destroyers are all going to be really popular going forward. 
That's not the end of it though, as seven vehicles have also gone down as well. In general, if you like to smash tanks at long range, it's a good day to be a Necron, as not only have those heavy destroyers improved, but also have the Doomstalker, Doomsday Arc, and Doomscythe. The Doomstalker and Doomsday Arc have both gone down 10 points, and the Doomscythe has gone down 20. They all seem like pretty reasonable changes to me, to be honest. I wouldn't exactly say they're the biggest buffs in the world, but they will help out units that already packed a fairly reasonable punch. Out of the two ground units with Doomsday weapons, I think I still prefer the Doomsday Arc over the Doomstalker slightly. I failed to compete a bit better, the Doomstalker might have had to go down an extra 5 points perhaps. The extra toughness, ballistic skill and all the Gauss flares, I think really still swing it for the Doomsday Arc for me. I feel like the Doomside is probably still going to get overlooked in favour of things like Doomsday Arc or Locust Heavy Destroyers too. 20 points really is quite a decent buff, but really not a lot of people were using it before. Finally for the standard vehicles, the Knight's Hide has also dropped by 15 points, it's down to 130 now. It definitely feels a bit more realistic, and people might consider it just that little bit more for that niche role of jumping in units with Prismatic Dimensional Breach, the one that can near guarantee you a charge on turn 2. I still think it might be a bit questionable just literally as a transport though. It's always going to be a tough sell just compared with putting more bodies on the table in the first place. Finally, the three other Necron Lords of War have also dropped in points. The Monolith came down 30 points to 330, the Obelisk dropped by 40, again down to 330, and the Tesseract Vault is now 450, that one's a 50 point drop. I think out of these three, my favourite is still the Monolith, as they have received some relatively similar percentage-wise drops, even if the exact points values are very slightly different. It means that you could potentially fill three monoliths in a super heavy detachment for less than a thousand points now. I'm not convinced that it's going to be particularly commonly done, but that will be putting an awful lot of threatening living metal on the table. I still think that the obelisk really just doesn't have the damage output to carry it even at that point level. And I still think the Tesseract Vault is interesting, you're trading out the direct damage output for more fancy Katarn powers, but I still think I'd go for the monolith over it, being 120 points cheaper. I perhaps don't think that the vehicle drops are quite as important as the infantry ones. I think out of this list, perhaps the Doomsday Arc is still perhaps my favourite of the bunch. If we're talking meta things, then Quantum Shielding isn't actually the worst against the Tau Railgun, which also won't be able to one-shot it with 14 wounds. Overall, I think that this is a really nice boost for the Necrons, and a good example of what Games Workshop can do with Chapter Approved. Take an army that's really not been performing too well, and give it a nice boost going into future games. I think Flayed Ones, Scorpec Destroyers and Locust Heavy Destroyers are the ones that most have my eye at the moment. It's going to be interesting to see what people make with these changes. So anyway, hope you've enjoyed the video. Feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics if you'd like to see more about this. I'll be aiming to cover most of the other changes from the other factions from Chapter Approved as well. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the content on the channel, I would just like to mention the channel's Patreon page, which is down in the video description. It is what supports me to keep on making these videos, and it's quite a big motivation to keep on making them, even when my vocal cords are trying to give up on me. I do try and give a fair few benefits for patrons, including seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.